tutorial is intended to help you get started quickly with understanding and working with Monolithics X parameters based models for many circuits amplifiers. Monolithics is an Agilent Technology Solution Partner, and the models we will be discussing were developed using an Agilent PNAX nonlinear vector network analyzer. We would like to further acknowledge that X parameters is a trademark of Agilent Technologies. Let's discuss X parameters a little bit. If we have a device such as a surface mount amplifier as shown here, it actually provides a very good way to represent this amplifier and go beyond S parameter models. X parameters are analogous to S parameters in that there is no need for knowledge of internal circuitry. However, whereas S parameters provide for linear input and output relationships, X parameters enable nonlinear simulations. However, we have to be careful not to extrapolate model performance outside of the data range used to build the model. For example, in S parameters, you generally want to limit yourself to the start and stop frequency that was used to build the S parameter uh, data set or model. In the case of X parameters, uh, we need to be careful uh, not only to not exceed the frequencies that we're used to build the model, but also the power range and bias conditions and so on. The monolithics model for this type of a part includes both a linear S parameter mode and a nonlinear X parameter mode for the convenience of the designer. You can see in the icon depicted in the upper right here that there is a model mode parameter that we'll be discussing further a little later on. Like S parameters, X parameters provide a mapping between incident A waves and reflected or outgoing B waves. In this case, the incident and reflected waves have two subscripts. One relates to a port index and the other to an input frequency harmonic index. The input amplitude on port 1 at the fundamental frequency A11 provides a power dependence on the relationships. Such a power dependence is not present in small signal or power independent linear S parameters. One of the key advantages of X parameters is the way that the harmonic waves are captured along with accurate phase information. So we get information, for example, on the output wave of both the fundamental and harmonic amplitude and phase information. This enables time domain waveform transformations to be performed as well as accurate analysis of cascaded nonlinearities. Now we have a little bit of a feel for the nature of the models we're going to be working with. Let's go over how to download the model from the MiniCircuits landing page. The MiniCircuits Monolithics Vendor Partner landing page is accessed by the link shown in the clip here and also from various links on the mini circuits and monolithics web pages. This page contains various information that monolithics has developed for mini circuits products including the the models we're going to be discussing today along with other information. This page is changing as we add new models and information so it may look a little different than what you're seeing here uh, when you are looking at it but the the essence of how to find the model will be the same. What you'll do is, is find the corresponding product number that you're looking for and then click on the model link shown here. This will open up a model download area and the model download area will include uh, some useful information uh, included, including a, a data sheet that you can pull up that will have various information which will also be able to pull up within the simulator a PCB layout drawing and you may want to recreate the key aspects of that layout in, in your test board if you're designing an amplifier that you're using a model from, from this area because the more closely you map the, the solder pads and the via holes to the way that the device was measured and modeled uh, the better chance you are to get good measured to modeled agreement in your final design. When you click on the link shown next to uh, the ADS box here, uh, it says ADS Design Kit, uh, you'll be able to download a zip file that will contain the model itself and other necessary files, including a 
installation manual and as we'll see in some example project information. When you click to download the model you'll be asked to log in or register on the website and you'll just need to accept a software license agreement as you download that model. The contents of the zip file are shown in this slide and we can see that there's an examples folder. The examples for this particular project are set up to include files for different versions of Agilent ADS as well as an installation guide that will uh, help you get the models installed into your ADS simulator so they're ready to use. This is just a brief look at the installation guide and the table of contents for the installation guide. So now we're ready to turn our attention to some simulation examples. To do this we'll use the mini circuits PHA1 plus model as an example. After starting Agilent ADS, I'm running ADS version 2012 here today, we can go ahead and open a new project workspace. When I extracted the zip file, I put it into my C Modelithics folder, and we see I have uh, various downloads here. The one I'm looking for is the PHA1DK folder, and when I open that up, I'm going to be able to see something similar to that list of files we were looking at a moment ago. I'll open up the examples and I'm going to want the workspace version. Okay, and what has uh, come up already is a file that represents a circuit schematic for a linear simulation of the PHA1 plus amplifier. The model mode parameter here, we'll go ahead and double click on the model icon. The model mode parameter has two positions, zero for small signal and one for X parameters. So we've got this set up as a simple small signal simulation. When I click on the help key from it within this parameters window, this will open up a model information data sheet that will look something like this and contain a lot of useful information such as the frequency range of applicability, in this case the model predicts in the linear mode S parameters up to 18 gigahertz, noise up to 6 gigahertz, and the X parameter mode will allow for nonlinearities predicted with three harmonics captured from 0.2 to 3 gigahertz. This particular model was developed from measurements on a 20 mil Rogers board. The recommended voltage from mini circuits for this amplifier was used at 5 volts and additional information contained in the data sheet would include the details of the X parameter setup that was used to generate the measurements using the PNAX and VNA. We can see that uh, we have uh, the frequency ranges and power, power details here. Reference planes for the model are shown in the diagram on the second page. The landing pad uh, or the test fixture layout detail uh, which is also included in a drawing format on the download data sheet as we talked about earlier is shown and typical uh, measured results or model simulated results are also included in this data sheet. Other input parameters include the RF frequency which in harmonic balance simulations can be tied to that uh, fundamental frequency setup some of our models are substrate scalable. Uh, this particular one, we're just showing the, the substrate thickness and epsilon r that was used to develop the model. Let's close the parameter window and click simulate. The simulation results are showing us the, the S parameters, S11, S22, S21 magnitude, and S12 magnitude. Let's turn our attention to nonlinear simulation. In another schematic window, we have a harmonic balance setup. So we see here an ADS harmonic balance setup. We're picking three harmonics. Uh, we are going to simulate at a 3 gigahertz fundamental, which is also tied to the 
This variable is tied to the RF frequency in the model. The model mode is set to 1 and the power range is set to sweep from minus 2 to 12. When we simulate this schematic, the output graphs in this example are set up to plot the gain versus power, the S21 or forward transmission phase, as well as the output powers, the B2 wave at amplitude uh, for the fundamental, the second harmonic and the third harmonic, as well as the phase in the fundamental, the second and third harmonic. Final simulation we'll look at will be an ACPR type of simulation using a CDMA signal source to drive the nonlinear model for the amplifier. We'll use the tune mode to explore variations in the input power on the spectral output. So we'll click on tune and we have this set up to tune the input power between minus 10 and plus 10 dBm. The output spectrum for the input side of the amplifier is shown in blue and for the output side of the amplifier is shown in red versus variable frequency from the carrier. The Input power initially set to minus 10 dBm, and we'll see as we raise the power, say to 0 dBm, the, the noise levels are going, of course the output signal power is going to go up, and as we further raise to say plus 6 dBm, uh, we see significant energy in the sidebands adjacent to the main carrier channel of the signal. To summarize, many circuits and monolithics are partnering for significantly improved customer success. This tutorial has demonstrated how to use monolithics new X parameters based models for selected mini circuit amplifiers within Agile and ADS. We hope that you found this tutorial to be of some use and we thank you for your interest.